For our next example, you want to upload the file Formula Car Bell Crank IGIS provided with the course. When this file is open, we want to navigate to the model workspace. We want to right click on the Formula Car name and capture design history. We're going to navigate to the simulation workspace. And under study type, we want to talk about additional studies that are provided with Fusion 360 Ultimate. You'll notice that a few of them show preview underneath, such as nonlinear static stress and event simulation. Each of these study types can be very handy in helping you analyze your designs. The one we're going to focus on now is called shape optimization. We're going to go ahead and say OK. And now we're in this simulation study environment. The first thing that we want to do is change the material. Now currently, the default material in Fusion 360 is set to steel. We're going to change this one to aluminum 6061. The next thing that we want to do is make the lower pivot ID fixed. So under structural constraints, we're going to make the inside, both sections of this pivot, fixed. This is going to allow us to keep the bottom section of the pivot fixed and take a good look at the load distribution path. The next thing that we want to do is create a load on the two upper holes. We're going to select the ID of both of these holes. And we want to change the direction of it. Now if we go to a right view, I'm going to rotate these around until they're at 155 degrees. And I'm going to set the load value to be 350 pounds. We can change the unit to pound force and set the load to 350 pounds. I do want to note that the shape generation study is not taking into account static stress analysis. It's only looking at the critical load path. So whether or not we add one pound or 350 pounds, it really doesn't matter in this case because it's not looking at the overall load and the stress distribution of your part. You're simply setting the materials and the load as part of a standard study. But again, the shape optimization does not make use of a static stress study. It's going to be very important that if you use this type of simulation study to generate a shape, that you still go through the process of creating a static stress study, which we've done two times in our mastery course already. At this point, we have the green check mark in our pre-check. Let's go ahead and solve the study using the cloud. When we look at the load path, when we adjust the slider, you can see the various areas where the load path is carrying through from our load initially down to the pivot, which is fixed. Now, this makes perfect sense because the load is carrying along this edge and we've got some structure on the inside. But this is fairly hard to see, and if we turn on the mesh, we can kind of see why. The mesh element size is fairly large, and it's not giving us a very good resolution on where the load path is going. So let's right click and let's edit the mesh settings. So in this case, what we want to do is edit the mesh settings to have a finer resolution mesh. We're going to turn on the absolute size, and we're going to change the absolute mesh element size to two millimeters. Say OK and we're going to regenerate the mesh. So if we look at the mesh now, we have a much finer resolution and we should get a better idea of where the load path is going on the bell crank. But we do need to regenerate the results. So let's solve the study one more time. With the study complete, let's go ahead and take another look at the results. So now we can see with the finer resolution mesh that we have a much clearer idea of where the load path is going. So if we change the resolution or if we change the slider on the color bar, we can get a better idea of the areas of concern where we need to focus. So if we take it all the way out, you can see the blue areas. But what I want to do is I want to bring it in to make sure that we have a good resolution to see the areas where we can remove. So we can take material out here and here, as well as inside of this pocket. And likely we can put a very minimal rib on the bottom section here, but uh, likely we can remove a lot of material around the outside as well. Each time the study runs, it's gonna automatically save. We have version three now. 
So now we can uh, carry on and move to the next step. The first thing that we want to do is make sure that we have the color bar slider in a good area so we can take this mesh and we can export it so we can create the geometry we need to minimize the shape and minimize the weight. So I'm going to set it at about 0.4. I'm going to go to the results section and I'm going to select promote. When we select promote, if we expand the bodies folder, we now have the original body and we have a mesh body. Now the mesh body can be used in various different ways. We obviously have a mesh workspace where we can clean up, smooth, and create a solid version of the mesh. But of course, we'll have all of the resolution of the mesh in that case. What we want to do is we want to take the original bell crank file and we want to modify it. So I'm going to create a sketch on the side face and I want to create some lines so that I can remove the areas of concern. I'm going to create another triangle down here. And I'm going to create another one over here. Coincident from this and this endpoint, and that'll fully define the rest of that line. If I hide the mesh body, you can see all the separate areas where I'm going to be removing material. So we can stop the sketch, select extrude, and grab all the triangular sections and extrude them through both sections and say OK. Now I want to apply a fillet by hitting F on the keyboard and go ahead and grab all these internal edges. I do also want to note another option. I'm going to hit cancel. Let's take a look at a secondary option for applying fillets. We're going to use the rule fillet feature. For input features or faces, I'm going to select the extrude cut that we just did from the timeline. We're going to set the radius value to 2 millimeters. We're going to set the topology option to all fillets. All fillets will grab the internal corners and all rounds will grab the external corners. We're going to go ahead and say OK. And this greatly simplifies the selection process. Let's go ahead and check the opacity control and make sure that it's 100% and save our file. So just a quick review, we created a shape generation study by looking at the critical load path when we loaded the bell crank in a certain orientation. By taking that critical load path, we then promoted a mesh body to give us a good idea where we should cut and remove material. We didn't directly use the mesh body to convert, but we could go into the mesh environment and we could create a solid body out of it. But because of the mesh resolution and the final resultant body, I felt it was better to use the mesh information to create a general sketch to remove the material. The next step in this process would be to take this bell crank and create a static stress study to make sure that the critical load path that we removed was also strong enough for the design in the terms of the load cases applied.